Hey guys, this is the portable power system that I built a few weeks ago on a hand truck. Uh, there were a lot of comments in that video asking to see solar panels, like what kind I connect to it, how I connect them, where I get them, things like that. Um, I didn't really talk about it too much in that video because that video was primarily focused on the construction of the cart. However, this is intended to be a solar powered uh, system. So it does seem rightfully so that we discussed some of that. So hopefully this video will answer some of those questions that have been asked. So here we have a pair of Boviet Solar 330 watt polycrystalline panels. But before we can make any connections on the solar panels, we need to take a look at the electrical specifications of both the solar panels and the inverter. So here we have the electrical label for the side of the inverter. And there are two main properties we need to take a look at. We need to know the max input, which is the open circuit voltage, often referred to as the VOC or voltage open circuit. And we have the MPPT voltage range, which is the voltage range the panels will operate under uh, normal working conditions, typically referred to as the VMP. So we can see we have a maximum open circuit of 145 volts DC and an optimal MPPT operating range of 60 to 115 volts DC. So now taking a look at the electrical label on the solar panels, we need to figure out how many we can connect in series and how many we can connect in parallel. So we see this panel has an open circuit voltage or VOC of 45.8 volts and a working voltage or VMP of 37.4 volts. If we wire two of these panels in series, we have 91.6 volts open circuit and 74.8 volts operating voltage. That fits nicely within the range defined by the grow watt controller, and that will give us 660 watts of input. If we wire three of these panels in series, we have 137.4 volts open circuit and 112 volts operating voltage. However, these two values are very close to the maximum limit of this controller. While 137 volts is below the max of 145 volts, uh, we also have to factor in cold weather. So the open circuit voltage on the solar panel of 45.8 volts is at a specific temperature. During cold weather or early in the morning, you could see more than that. So we need to factor in some headroom before we hit this 145 volt limit. We don't want to end up damaging our charge controller. So me personally, I would probably limit the open circuit voltage to 120 or 125-ish on this controller. Uh, so knowing that, we will stick to two panels in series or 660 watts. Uh, one additional thing we need to look at is the maximum amperage of these panels. There are two ratings, the working amperage or the short circuit amperage, often abbreviated as ISC. And uh, for the purposes of wiring calculations, we're going to look at the short circuit amperage or ISC. This panel has a rating of 9.33 amps. On our charge controller input, we used 10 gauge wire. 10 gauge wire is rated for 30 amps. So if we parallel two of these panels together, we will have 18.66 amps, which is well below the rating of this 10 gauge wire. So that gives us four panels total, two in series and two in parallel for a total of 1,320 watts. So here I have the power cart sitting on the porch. This thing is not designed to sit in the sun. I don't want the heat beating down on it. Uh, and it's also not weather resistant. So I've got uh, two rolls of PV extension cable. These are 20 foot rolls, 20 foot red and 20 foot black. They are 10 gauge cable with MC4 connectors spliced on. They're pretty much just extension cables. So I'll use these to connect the panels in the yard to the power station on the porch. So now I've got two cables coming off one solar panel and two cables coming off the other. So I'll take one lead from each panel and join them together to create the series string. And now looking at the first panel, I see this connector is labeled positive. Looking at the second connector, I see this one is labeled negative. So the positive goes into the red or the positive extension cable. And the black extension cable or the negative goes into the negative cable and solar panel. So there you can see the series connection and then you can see our extension cables are connected and they run back to the porch. So before I make any connections here, I'm gonna grab my voltmeter, make sure the polarities are correct and then I'm still in spec. So my cables are a little short here. I probably should have bought the 30 footers. So we got positive and negative and we're sitting at 82 volts. So that is perfect. We're good to go. So I'm going to switch off the inverter. And once that shuts down completely, I can pull out my MC4 cables. And uh, I did label one of these with the red or positive conductor per some viewer feedback on the original video. So thank you to the person who suggested that. Uh, so again, we'll double check our polarity. The red positive goes into the red positive conductor and we'll do the same with the negative. Uh, now that the panels are connected, it looks like the inverter actually turned itself back on. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so it looks like we are now charging with solar here. Let's see what our actual input is. So our PV input is 64 volts and we are charging at 427 watts. It's a little bit below the rating of 660, but they are not really facing the appropriate angle. So if we angle those panels a little better, we probably see closer to the 660 rating. 
Uh, so one thing I wanted to mention too is that these connectors are not designed to be disconnected under load. So once your inverter starts charging, if you need to remove your solar panels, you need to shut down the inverter completely before you make these disconnections. And with these MC4 connectors, there's a special tool you can get. It's really just a piece of plastic with these two tabs. Either in this orientation or this orientation, depending on the type of connector you have, these are spaced slightly different. And that will squeeze in on these two tabs here and allow you to pull the connector out. If you don't have this tool, I recommend you get one. It's like five bucks on Amazon. Um, you can use a pair of pliers on this, but you will ding up and damage your connector if you do that enough times. So this system would definitely benefit from having two strings of those panels connected or four panels total. And uh, the way you would do that is with these MC4 splitter adapters. So this one you can feed in two strings on one side and you'd have one output that goes to your inverter. Uh, any more than two strings and you really need to start looking at combiner boxes and fuses and circuit breakers and things like that. As far as where I get the panels, I typically look on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, things like that. And I'll just typically watch around those sites for a few weeks, months, until I find the deal I'm looking for. If you're looking at getting two, four, there's really no way to ship a panel that large that is cheap enough that it makes sense. That's why I like to find local pickup deals where I can just drive out and pick it up and it's easy and done. One thing to note too is when we were talking about the open circuit voltage of those panels, those are 72 cell panels so they have a higher open circuit voltage. With controllers that have a max rating of 140 to 150, it's really better to use 60 cell panels because then you can get three panels in series while still sticking within the operating range of the controller, uh, whereas in this setup we can only get two panels in series. I hope this video helped answer some of those questions. Hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.